welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, 800KXIC, kxic.com. And if you want to check us out on Thursdays on our YouTube feed, you're looking at a puppy cam. That's right, the puppy cam. We've got a silky terrier and another cute dog. Not sure which one. I keep forgetting the name of the second one. I should probably write it down. But uh, two cute dogs in the studio. One's brown. That's the Silky Terrier. And I believe that's the one chewing on my shoes. Yep. Literally, as I speak, chewing on my shoelaces. She loves my shoelaces for some reason. We'll talk about what the other breed is, too. Ron will inform us on that. We'll have our amazing pet story of the week. And we'll talk about Taste of the Wild. Arr, arr, arr. Taste of the Wild. Good name for a food, huh? And then, of course, we're going to talk about chewing technology, which is kind of a weird th topic. So it sounds weird, but it makes sense. They purposely make certain things so they can last longer so that dogs can't get things way back into their powerful jaws. We'll talk about what that's all about coming up. So that's what we're doing today. I'm Jay Caper, and Ron Salzroots here with Petland of Iowa City. Ron, what is that black and uh, what black and brown dog you have there? The Silky Terrier. That's the Silky? This is the Silky oh, Terrier. And I screwed up. Then what's the brown one? The Cavachon. Cavachon. Cavalier, King Charles mixed with the Bichon. That's, uh, and so we'll be reviewing the Silky Terrier. Where does it come from? You know, why did they, you know, what was the purpose of the breed way back when and all that kind of stuff? Uh, what, is it the right breed for you? Uh, and then the chew technology, we're going to talk about why, you know, why do dogs chew um, and then how to help you when you're choosing the chew uh, for your dog, you know, to maybe make some better selections so that you satisfy those chews even more. So learn why they chew. And then when you're there, you know, at when you're at Petland choosing the chew, uh, mm -hmm. then you can figure out, okay, this one's going to work better. I'm going to try that one and then find out, oh my goodness, that was really good. So We'll talk about chew technology, and then finally that taste of the wild. I look forward to it. So uh, how have things been going at the store lately, Ron? <clears throat> the way I would describe it is, is every day is a new day. That, that's where I'm at. I am that kind of person that is always, you know, always sticking to the basics and, and you know, where you need to be and all that kind of stuff. But it's always fun to change things within the basics. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm sure my employees get a kick out of my enthusiasm because when I walk in the door, it's kind of, I'm sure they're thinking, oh, what's, Ron, what's Ron's <laughs> message for the day going to be? It's always fun. So <laughs> I'm not that that angry you know, owner. I'm the one that comes in with a big smile. Hey, how's everybody doing? Well, that's this, a good thing. And this is what we're going to do today. So you don't think that a young Ron Salzer would mind working for the middle-aged Ron Salzer that you are right now? No. In fact, I emulate, you know, and I think as you grow older, you look back on those, you know, the bosses and, you know, that you've had in the past. And I, there's specific traits that I look at in my past and I go, I want to be like what that boss did for me. It's quite a, an interesting uh, role to play too, to manage that many people. And to, cause you have quite a few employees over 30. I think I'm at 35 right now. Is that right? Over 30. Over, wow. That's, that's great. Good for you. So, well, I, what did, what was that? What did he say? <laughs> so that was the silky terrier saying, yes, that's a lot of people. I thought that was big voice guy. Oh. Is, is he creeping in already? No, he's still out there in the lobby. I don't know what he's up to. We'll have to see what he's wearing when he comes in for the. This, that is cute. That is it sounds like a little baby. Well, it's contentment right now. I'm the sides of its belly. I'm just kind of rubbing them, and it's like going, "Oh yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you very please. much. Keep it up if you could, please. Thank you." All right. Well, today we'll get the big, big voice guy. We need your help here. It's time for the amazing pet story of the week. He's dressed like a baby. Oh. I, I thought those were baby noises coming from the dog, but he's got a just a diaper on right I now. I know, and that's always gross because he's done that in the past. Yeah, I just for, for New Year's. Remember, he was the New Year's baby. Yeah, he's got and the bonnet. There's on nothing his head. worse than a grown man with a hairy chest and a big pad hair on his back. back. Yeah, that was just. Just get out of here, big voice guy. Thanks for your help, though. We appreciate it. Today, we tell you about Snickers, a heroic Canadian dog honored for his life saving, for saving the owner, saving his owner, Gregory Gould. And Gregory Gould, when he adopted that dog from his neighbor, he thought he was getting a companion, not a saver. But at this point, Snickers is now a hero. The Collie Pointer mix helped out when he collapsed. Snickers being honored for the great work that he did uh, the, the dog was found pacing and 
barking frantically outside the neighbor's home at Oshawa, Ontario. So in Canada, police concluded that the dog lived next door and was done, wanted to check out the house. And Constable Rob Garnett peered in the window, saw the man lying on the floor. Snickers helped save his life. And another great story of a dog who helped save uh, an owner's life. And that's our amazing pet story of the week. Thanks, big voice guy. And thanks to Snickers for getting the job done. You like that one? Yeah. I think I think that's that's a little little contentment out of the Silky Terrier. So we're going to learn about the Silky Terrier when we come back. We're also going to talk about shoe technology and taste of the wild. It's all coming up here on the Positively Petland Show. I'm Jake Caprin for Ron Salter. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> And three, two, <coughs> one. 800 KXIC Morning host Jay Capron here with Ron Salzrude. What are we going to talk about this week, Ron? We are always finding fun things to talk about. That's all right. And now here, I need something. What's with this silky? What did we know? Oh, the silky terrier. You're going to stump me, right? Yeah, but yeah, I was thinking the chewing technology. No, I think I got. Okay. I'll try this. All right. Three. Two. 800 KXIC morning host Jay Capron here with Ron Salzer from Petland of Iowa City. Ron, what, what are we going to talk about this week? Here, let's see if we can figure this out. Yes, Aww. we are going to talk about the most contentful Silky Terrier. That's the breed of the week. We're then going to talk about chewing your dog. Understand why dogs chew, and you'll be able to select a better chew for your dog. It's a really good conversation. And then we're going to talk about Taste of the Wild. This is a five-star rated food. You want to know about it. All right. Ron Salzer with Petland of Bio City. Check him out on Lower Muscatine and the Positive Petland Show, 9 o'clock on Sundays and at KXIC.com. In three, two, one. Welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC and KXIC.com. I'm Jay Capron here with Ron Salzrud from Petland of Iowa City. 
And in the first segment, we heard about Snickers, who saved his owner. Good job, Snickers. We also got to know a little bit. Uh, we're going to get to know a little bit more about uh, the Silky Terrier here in this segment. And we've got to know a little bit about their personalities as uh, Silky Terrier has been a little vocal, a little happy, content noises that you're hearing here on the radio. Ron's here with Petland of Iowa City. So, Ron, tell us about the Silky Terrier. All right. So, Stump J All right. on the origins of the breed. So, where does the Silky Terrier originate from? In, in a mild hint, but it leads you in the wrong direction. It is related to the Yorkshire Terrier. So it's not from the UK, then. It's from Germany. I think I always default to Germany. Yeah, I think you, yeah, but I yeah. think there's a, probably a good chance it's from there because yeah. we do find that quite a bit. Where did, um, where did uh, England send the criminals? Scotland? I thought it was, isn't it Australia? Uh, Isn't there some history there on that one? Probably, Which is unrelated to the topic we're, we're discussing it's here. It's from Australia? Yeah, it's from oh, Australia. Okay. Uh, used to be... I think or, England had every... Co they had colonies everywhere. They were Colonies, they, they, yeah. They, they would just claim land, islands, and, hey, that's ours. <laughs> Arr, it's mine. Yes, it is be mine. So the Silky Terrier, originally known as the Sydney Silky... Oh, really? Originated because they took the Yorkshire Terrier, mixed it with the Australian Terrier. Is that a good? <laughs> That's not a good. Yeah, that was bad. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, uh, mate. <laughs> hey, mate. Hey, mate. Australian Terrier, <clears throat> and uh, came up with the Yorkshire or with the Silky Terrier. They also went further back, delving further back. Uh, they also found signs uh, or evidence of the scrappy Tasmanian ratter, <laughs> known as Broken Coated Terrier. That one I do not know anything about. Uh, but you, all purebreds or mixed breeds from the past, and we love to just find out. You know, hey, where was this one originated from? What are the different breeds that go into making it? Um, the DNA uh, testing of it and just kind of comparing it with others, the Karen Terrier, the Dandy <laughs> Dinmont Terriers. Dandy. The Dandy uh, <laughs> were also in there. So a lot of little things. I would say the Silky Terrier has a lot of Yorkie look. Um, there, were, there are some that say, oh, it's not that much, but look at a Silky and you're going to probably, most people would say, well, isn't that a Yorkshire Terrier? It's got a lot of a similar traits. In general, what I've read that they've their their intention was was to make it a little bigger, and it is on average one pound bigger than a Yorkie. Not a big deal there. And then they also went after the coat. They were going uh, after a silkier coat, hence the name. And they did do that because if you combine, if you look at two the Yorkshire Terrier with the silky side by side, you'll notice that the silky has thinner hair. Um, and it is silkier as a result. So in the 1950s, they came over to America. Uh, we fell in love with the Silky Terrier. They, we right away started seeing them come out in magazines, you know, front page, uh, all that kind of stuff. So it took off fairly quickly uh, in America when it came in the 1950s. So <clears throat> I always like to read a little bit from the AKC book uh, because they do a, a really good job of writing, I find. <clears throat> So in their form and function side, uh, the dog's hair was spectacular. Mm. Liquid silver tipped in black, rich browns and golden tans. The hair is to be parted in the middle mm. so that it cascades down on each side, presenting a well-groomed but not sculptured appearance. Unlike the Yorkie, however, it should not reach the ground. So they're telling you how long to, to, to groom it. The desired piercingly keen appearance is further enhanced by the dog's small erect v-shaped ears hmm. so that is a little description of what that little uh, silky looks like they also go on uh, just on character and everything intelligent bold energetic uh, they need human partners who will know how to channel their energy into daily exercise and i would say because these are we haven't talked about the size these are smaller dogs we're under 10 pounds well under 10 pounds hey that exercise you can do that all in the house it makes it kind of easy on that one Owners must be strong and make, not physically, uh, and make sure they set rules and stick to them, which is indicating this is a smart dog. This isn't one of those dogs that, um, you know, is slow to learn and all that. It's quick to learn. And if you're not training the dog or, you know, you know, uh, you know, Susie, come, you know, kind of thing and, and working with your dog, they then will start training you. 
because they want something. And so there'll be, be the dog that jumps up on you. It's a little dog, but if you don't like that, it'll jump up on you until you start telling it, you know, hey, this is what we're doing now and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it needs attention for sure. Uh, a little, you know, a little exercise, throwing a little ball around the house uh, gets the exercise out. Uh, and it's a wonderful dog. It is a non-shedding dog, a little higher maintenance as a result, because now you got to wash you got to, you know, put the conditioners in, blow dry the hair, brush it out. Uh, daily brushing is going to be needed, depending on how long you let that coat go. If you're into the low maintenance side, well, then you're going to have the groomer cut it shorter so that it's easier to take care of. Uh, uh, there, But on the maintenance side, there you go. You got to go to the groomer to get this one cut. Now, you can do it yourself, but it'll look like a hack job. Groomers do, yeah. a, you know, a, do a nice job. Let them do what they do, and they'll make that puppy uh, and dog look wonderful when you come back, no matter whether you like it short or long kind of thing. So uh, really wonderful small dog. We talked, you know, spunky, uh, really cool history to it. Uh, uh, it's a higher maintenance dog. So just realize you're doing that. But again, it's a small dog. So higher maintenance is all relative. This was if this was a larger dog, there would be even more maintenance uh, kind of a thing. So a uh, really wonderful breed. Uh, we've got what, four or five of them. I, I got the whole litter. I just got go, went crazy on mm -hmm. this one. Uh, and brought them into the store, and so you'll be able to see those uh, in through the weekend uh, in our store before you know uh, before they go home. Hopefully, you get in there and see them on time. Good deal. That's the Silky Terrier, <laughs> and that's our breed of the week. So onward to chewing technology. And some listeners might get frustrated when their dog chews up their toys, and especially if they just spend some money on it and it's <laughs> brand new. Hey, it's gone already, Ron. Why did this dog chew up my toy? It's ruined. I just bought it. So if you're one of those that are frustrated with what your dog is doing, whether it's chewing furniture, uh, really aggressively chewing those toys, uh, all sorts of different things, let's, let's step back and go, hey, let's understand what's going on here. Um, if you're concerned about what's happening, and maybe this is a change in behavior, what we want to do is rule out medical problems right away. If there's a medical issue going on with your dog, let's figure that out. So, you know, you're the judgment on that one. You can see the total behavior, what's going on in all different ways. And if you suspect, hey, gosh, those are bleeding gums. Oh, there's a tooth on the floor. Um, if this is a good time to go uh, talk with your veterinarian, go uh, and get that resolved. So ruling out all the medical problems, moving on, um, your dog is going to chew for different purposes. So whether it's a, you know, I'm tense and I need to get some of that out or whether it's I'm a puppy and I'm teething. Uh, so pup, uh, puppies for the small breeds are all the way through eight months. Um, for the large breeds, it goes all the way through 15 months. Hmm. So they, they grow a lot at the beginning and then slow down their growth as they get closer to it. But large breeds grow all the way through 15 months. Um, and then those middle dogs are somewhere in between in there. So if it's a teething issue, then realize, okay, I got to have chews on there uh, to, to help my dog uh, with that that desire to chew things that is just overwhelming. Just like a baby is teething, we want to help them with those teething issues, giving them something that they enjoy to chew on rather than the carpeting, the legs on your furniture, the walls, you know, all the different things that they get. Here, the cardboard, uh, this little cabochon is chewing on uh, the side of cardboard right now mm. because, hey, I can sink my teeth into it and it just feels so good when I do it. So get them, you know, you want to uh, identify why is that uh, dog chewing in those different ways. So. Uh, another uh, thing that dogs, the reasons why dogs choose just mental exercise to, um, I, I need something to do. I want to, you know, I, I, I would like to go run outside, but right now, you know, I can't, I don't have that opportunity. So I just need something to do. So it's, you know, good mental exercise to, uh, pass away that time. And it's constructive for the dogs because they do need to chew, uh, and, um, and and get that energy out. The last thing is just playtime chewing. You know, how many of us, I think I can, I, this is last night, I walk in the door and Wendy is walking out of one room into another and she's saying, this thing is so gross, it's all wet. But what's happening is hilarious. She's holding a toy and the dog won't let go of it. <laughs> so Susie, not being dragged, but running and but staying with it and growling. Mm -hmm. And that was some, you know, the dog was playtime. She might have, 
she might have been playing and saying, holy cow, this thing is all wet now. Mm-hmm. But playtime is another chewing event for the dog. Um, you ever notice that um, the dogs waggle their head vi- kind of violently mm-hmm. from side to side? What do you think's happening there? Uh, I would guess that kind of like is instinctual of when they're trying to kill the prey, right? Right. Yeah. So that it's having fun. That's their fun to, to do that. So, uh, so all sorts of different reasons why dogs chew. So now let's get into, all right, well, what do I do about it? Find the chew that they enjoy. One of the best stories uh, in my store that I've had where the customer really, really got it was they bought a Nyla bone in this case, and it was a hard, harder chew but they were designed to get whittled away over time and the dog can ingest it and it's all that kind of stuff and the customer came in had it was a large breed puppy came in and had the toy the snyla bone in their hand and said i want my money back on this and i went tell me what's going on well i bought it five days ago my dog has just been incessant on chewing it but in five days it's gone And I go, well, your dog is a puppy. Your dog incessantly was chewing on this probably most of the day for five days. It loved it because it wasn't chewing on other things. I go, if I were you, I'd buy five more of those things and have a wonderful, you know, couple of weeks ahead of you because the dog will go crazy over that Nyla bone rather than over your furniture, your, you know, all the other stuff. And the customer got it. cleared the shelf of them and said yes i do get it because that was a good up you know good time because my dog was not bugging me it wasn't chewing other things got the whole process where i found a chew that the dog really liked i'm going to get more of it also know that when you buy the second one of anything the dogs are going to usually chew it less it's not the brand new thing anymore. And so now it's not as new as it was. And so they typically last longer the second time around and everything. So understand toys are meant to be destroyed in most cases. That's the purpose. And the dog is, that's, <laughs> that's what the purpose of the dog you know, is, is all about. I want to destroy this thing. Um, so you, things will get destroyed. Now I get it if you, know, you bought one toy and it lasted three seconds. Okay, yeah. But realize what that toy was you know, made out of and all that kind of stuff and avoid that uh, toy in the future. Another great story is learn uh, and help your dog with chewing on different textures. When you come into our store, um, you might, if you just stand back in the toy aisle, you actually will see a pattern in our toy aisle. And that is, is on the left-hand side are the hardest toys. Those are, you know, they, there's really no give in that toy. Um, it might flake off a little bit, like I said, on the Nylabone type products and other products like it, uh, but they're really hard. As you move to the right, you're going to notice that they're harder rubber toys. So now there's some give. Their teeth can sink into it a little bit more, um, and, and uh, they can squish things a little bit kind of a thing. So now you're into the harder rubber toys a different texture for that dog. So you're, you want to expose your dog to different textures. One, to open the palate of that dog. Because let's say they like the Nyla bone, but they also like the texture of that carpet. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of So keep, as we look at the toy aisle, you're going to notice that then it goes to uh, easy, squishy, rubbery things. And so now they're easy to choose. So a lot of times people just go and say, hey, well, that's small breeds like that. And you're, you're right. They have weaker jaws. And so they want to be able to crunch down on something. And so the uh, latex type products uh, where they're rubbery, but they're really easy to, uh, to, to chew on and all that kind of stuff. So now you're into that level. Large breed owners, if you have a non-chewer, these would be great for you. But if it was a strong chewer, they're going to rip these things up pretty quickly. Then you get into different fabrics. So now it's the rope type products, um, cheaper products, but now it's a different texture that they can get a hold of. They can really whip these things around when they're doing that whole head waggle mm-hmm. thing. Now the knots are flying around. Guess what <laughs> that's feeling like to them? It's it's instinctually what it would be like if they were after the rat or the raccoon or the whatever. And I know we're going, I don't, 
this is what they're thinking. They're trying, you know, they're playing and everything. So the ropes play that kind of role in it. And those are great for everything from small breeds to large breeds. And they'll have smaller ones and bigger ones, you know, kind of a thing for that. Uh, for those that have the puppies, take that rope put it underwater, get it drenched and everything, put it in the freezer, and now you've got, just like we did would do with a human baby, you know, the teething rings and the ice, or, you know, the cold things that we put into the freezer, now you've done the same thing for your dog, hmm. plus there's a little bit of hydration going on there as it's uh, uh, melting and everything. Uh, it's cold on their gums, so it's soothing that pain that they're getting as they're losing their teeth, so uh, ropes are really good for that purpose, and they're usually pretty cheap. You know, kind of a thing. Um, something that we're getting into, and I'll I'll admit, man, I'm an old stodgy on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. That whole hemp thing, uh, hemp rope and hemp fa fabric, I, I think it was just a couple years ago, I finally somebody said, Ron, uh, you can't get high off of that stuff. And I go, oh, I thought... I thought it was just that thing and people were doing other stuff with the rope and everything. Yeah. I, I was ignorant. I'll, I'll plainly go there. But now I understand it, Sue. So, you're going to see hemp products in there. Why? Because they tend to be stronger than the cotton and the nylon and everything. Hmm. And it's very attractive to the dog as far as the texture goes. Uh, there is no uh, getting, uh, there's no, what do you call it? Drug ability in these things. You don't get anything when you chew on them. Yeah. So don't worry about that thing. Don't go down the path that I was on forever. Um, they're totally safe. They do not alter anything on your dog or anything like that. They're just stronger is all it is. Um, so hemp rope is coming into our store and hemp toys are going to come into our store as well. So now you're getting into kind of the stiffer fabrics and everything. So from the strong chewers all the way to the weak chewers, just by the appropriate size at that point. Mm -hmm. Now you're moving into uh, different fabrics and plush toys plush toys you know the carpeting you know kind of a thing if they're going after fabric and and that kind of stuff get some plush toys now for you strong chewers out there yes they go through these quicker but what do you want them to do chew the fabric on your uh carpeting and uh, bedspreads and all that kind of stuff or these toys and so that's the purpose of them you know if it is a oh gosh you know you, you go through these so quick you can go the cheap route but you do know that they're going to be made cheaper and they're going to go through them quicker. Um, try a little bit more expensive one from time to time to see if you can find one that your dog can't quite figure out. Manufacturers are definitely working on this. Uh, I just was talking with a manufacturer yesterday on dog toys and they were pitching how this toy is stronger than the average and that they can pull on it here, pull on it as hard as you can, you know, that whole thing. So they are working on making stronger plush toys and, of uh, fabric -y toys uh, and we need them because our dogs do like that texture um, then you get into so now you got plush toys uh, they have stuffing and stuff in them um, then they take the stuffing back out of them because we know some of the dogs and actually I think 50% of the dogs out of there they get that plush toy and yeah, they chew on it, but man, their goal in life is to get the stuffing out. Mm -hmm. um, I Those here, uh, out of all, I have weak chewers as far as my dogs go, but man, if they sense that there's stuffing in that toy, uh, just yesterday, there was, you know, it was like, what died in the family room? Holy cow, there's stuffing everywhere, kind of a thing. Well, they make toys without the stuffing in them for that purpose so that there's not all the mess to clean up, but then it's still a plush toy. They even make toys where they have removable squeakers. And I have been, this goes on both sides of the fence. People out there that want that plush toy, but I don't want the squeaker, take it out. And when I show people that, they go, oh my goodness, I didn't know you could, I want that toy now. Huh. And I go, you can actually put other things in there. It's a little pouch on the inside. So, you know, you can put a, a sock or whatever in there and they'll actually like, they like your smells and stuff like that. And so if they smell you in it, they're going to be more attracted to it as well. Um, but they have replaceable squeakers as well. So you can buy a squeaker pack. And when they destroy the squeaker that's in there, you can put a new one in there. So squeakers are something that your dogs like. Again, getting back to their that that in, uh, that native uh, desire to get after that rabbit or whatever, they like the squeaking, I guess, aspects of it. And that's that's 
the theory of it. Um, so now you go through the plush and the non-stuffed uh, ones and all that kind of stuff. So here is a really good display of toys. You want to get a smattering of all the way from hard, the rubber, latex, soft, plush, squeak, non-squeak. They have ultrasonic squeakers now where you can't even hear it when they squeak on it. These are all great toys for your dog to satisfy all those desires that we talked about at the front end, whether it's a puppy, whether it's got getting energy out, whether it just needs a mental, you know, I need to do something kind of a thing and, and work on that kind of a thing. Um, you can attract them to these different things by playing is a really good way. And so you're playing with the toy and, and pulling with them and all that kind of stuff and having fun in that way. Or you can put products in there. So the Kong is a really a fairly popular toy out there. They got the Kong stuff. Um, people will put other things in there uh, that they eat uh, from the pantry, like peanut butter and stuff. Realize your dog, you know, we're not, you know, most of us are not brushed on the teeth. There's sugars and stuff in those peanut butters. And so you're not supposed to introduce that into your dog's diet because now you're going to have to brush the teeth because you're going to introduce tooth decay due to the sugar and stuff. Kong has solved that for you. There's stuff called Kong, it's Kong stuff. Um, and you just spray it. It's like cheese whiz into the Kong or into the toy or whatever. And now you can, you give it to them and they're like trying to get at it and chew it and squeeze it and all that kind of stuff. If you wanted that Kong stuff to last longer, put the Kong or whatever the toy is that you squeeze, you know, squirted the stuff into, put it in the freezer. And now it'll be a longer lasting toy for your dog as well. So a lot of really good uh, thoughts on chews. The last one uh, that we, I mentioned to Jay uh, it, it, right before the show, the show, uh, a key to uh, strong chewers is buy a toy bigger than you normally get. Um, you can't go too big because if they can't get their jaw around it, then it doesn't work either. But dogs can chew things a lot easier if they can get it to the back of their jaw. And if they get it back there, that's where they're the strongest, and that's where they destroy most of the chews. So realize when you're going for those harder rubbers and, and hard toys and all that kind of stuff, get the bigger one. And that way they can't get it to the back. It'll last longer as a result. They'll probably even work harder to get after it. The one thing uh, here, the one chew that I actually forgot about talking about, we'll just squeak it in here, natural chews. Make sure you get a variety of natural chews. I probably have just as many natural chews as I do all these rubbers and, you know, rubber toys and the uh, plush toys and all that kind of stuff. We've got deer antlers, elk antlers, water buffalo antlers. We have tendons, muscles, tracheas. Uh, hooves, all sorts of things. Try those things with your dogs. And if you're looking for a recommendation, just ask one of our counselors and we can give you recommendations of, you know, these are what dogs are, we're finding really like. And that's a great segue actually to the next topic, which is the call of the wild, because you're talking about tracheas and the real stuff in the wild. And that's what the whole concept is with this food is called call of the wild, right? Taste of the taste wild. Taste of the wild. Okay. So taste of the wild has been around. It's a, from, uh, from my perspective, it's an interesting product because I don't think they do any marketing. I've never really noticed much uh, when it does come out. Um, but yet, everybody seems to know about Taste of the Wild. So it's a good of the, one of those that's word of mouth. So some of the things that they boast about Taste of the Wild is a lot of antioxidants in their uh, foods, uh, uh, blueberries and raspberry, chelating minerals, which is interesting because this is something that will collect those bad things out of the dog as it's going through as and so that they can then, you know, poop it out. So in, interesting, I don't see that in many dog foods being talked about. DHA, uh, for those that have puppies, uh, DHA and, and uh, some other things are great for brain development through the puppy years. Um, doesn't do anything for us adults or your adult dog, um, but it's it's uh, great for that puppy side. So in their puppy formulas, they have DHA. Hmm. Um, fatty acids, uh, you know, omega-3s, all those kind of things, those are great for skin and coats. And they do work. It's just amazing when you up the level of them, your dog looks healthier and better. And actually, they've now proven that it decreases the shedding in your dog. So there's a lot of good things there. <laughs> Dried ch ch chicory roots. Mm. <laughs> 
All right, so it's good for probiotic bacteria in the intestines is what that's trying to tell you there. Garbanzo beans, a great protein because we do the same thing. Vitamins and minerals, uh, great for the dog. So you're seeing some different things in addition to the meat sources that we always talk about on there. Uh, guaranteed probiotics, kind of interesting that they say guaranteed. So there's some, hey, does it work or doesn't work? They're guaranteeing it on there. Uh, some of their uh, and most of their diets are no grain. Uh, so that's a trend in the industry. And I will do a caveat. Grains have not been proven to be bad for your dog. Um, it's just that people, uh, manufacturers out there took the cheap grains and started using a lot of them and uh, and parts of the grains that your dog can't even digest. So so our, in, our uh, society has gone down that no grain side. But grains are still good as long as they're the good, healthy components of the grains, just like for us. Um, Potato fibers, uh, proteins uh, blended from optimal amino acid profiles, and so all sorts of things that they've really worked hard on putting a blend together for your dog on how would it eat in the wild, you know, so to speak. Venison are in a lot of the, they have different flavors and stuff. So you'll see venison, lamb, turkey, quail, oh. uh, salmon, uh, other fish. Uh, kind of a thing. So sounds like good stuff. Yeah, and that's uh, the five star, which we don't see too often. On the right, radio, and right? so we just we always like to use a uh, third party as far as you know rating of the dog food, taste of the wild. Um, most of their all of their uh, dog foods are rated four stars or above, and they have actually have some five star rated uh, dog foods, and we actually have those in the store. Wow! So uh, really good product. Uh, dog Food Advisor actually doesn't come out with anything that they say, hey, they got an issue with. Uh, they don't tap dance around anything. So a really good product. Uh, uh, a lot of good benefits that you're going to see from it. Um, it's something that if you're looking for a new dog food, cat food, this is a great food to try. That's good stuff. That's the taste of the wild. That's the Awesome Petland Show. We're done. We're out of time. For Ron Salsrud, I'm Jake Capron. Stop by $5 nail trims, buy 10, get one free on their dog and cat food, and a wonderful place to go. Bring your family out, play with the pups, have a good time. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,